Hello, Robert Bastian here of Laryngopedia and Bastian Voice Institute. My topic uh, for this short video is the role of dilation in treating people with the no burp syndrome, uh, retrograde cricopharyngeus dysfunction, or RCPD, as, as the disorder is called. Uh, I don't do dilation, and I'll give you the reasons that I don't. Um, this is one opinion. Other people may have different opinions based on their experience or their thought process. But based in 1,100 uh, patients uh, in my personal caseload, I don't think it has a role. And um, I'll give you two main reasons. But first, the background, what is dilation? It's the use of a balloon. So the, it's, it almost looks like a wire that goes into the area of the cricopharyngeus muscle and then it's blown up with a liquid and it, it uh, increases in size quite a bit. It's like a sausage when it's blown up and that stretches this area where the cricopharyngeus muscle is. Dilation is normally done for scarring or for anatomical narrowing, uh, not for increased tension or tone. Uh, now I know in the lower esophageal sphincter it's done, but the, there's often a, a sort of a fibrosis in muscles that are dilated or the purpose is to actually rupture the muscle. And here we don't want to rupture the muscle because it functions normally in the front, in the anti-grade direction. It's just that when presented with, the knee, with a burp from below, the muscle becomes hypertensive and it won't let go. It lets go fine when you swallow a large pill or a piece of meat and so that tells you that it's not a scar band, it's not an unyielding muscle because it yields and relaxes and opens widely. Furthermore, in the operating room under general anesthesia and every, uh, the, all of the muscles in the body are relaxed, you often see the, the muscle is completely open. In fact, in many people you can see right through the sphincter uh, well into the esophagus below. So it is not a, a scar band or now the exception is people with anti-grade cricopharyngeus dysfunction for which we do myotomy. Those are people with swallowing problem. Food, the sphincter won't let go in the anti-grade or forward direction. And when you operate on those people, a subset of them have replaced the muscle almost with a scar-like material. The muscle even becomes kind of gray and unyielding. You can take a suction cannula and it's, it's like pulling on a scar band. In RCPD patients, you put your suction cannula through into the esophagus and you can stretch it in all directions. It's very stretchable under anesthesia. The other reason uh, I would say, in addition to the normal appearance of the muscle, the normal anti-grade opening, uh, and the fact that it is therefore not a scar band that you're dilating, but it's but dilating, but it's a hypertonic, hyper-squeezing muscle from below that you're relaxing, making go limp. So the other reason is that having done about 1,100 people, uh, Botox works routinely, extremely well, and uh, so I don't know what the addition of dilation is to a procedure that already works extremely well. Now, it works differently in different people, and there's the occasional person that doesn't work so well, but in my view, that's mostly an issue of targeting or dose requirement, the occasional person who's kind of insensitive to Botox and needs a big dose. And then the last thing I would say is that when dilation is added, it of course adds expense. So if I'm the patient and, and uh, it's being done for me, I might respectfully request that the Botox be done without dilation to save expense because we're, uh, we're aiming for a total cost of somewhere around $4,000 in the operating room for everything, and uh, maybe a third of that for the EMG method that's done here in the office. Um, so there are some thoughts for you to, to just uh, turn around in your head and consider as you uh, work with your own personal physician to resolve this terrible problem. Thank you for listening.